Hello, everybody. Glad to be here with you guys this morning. Je dis à nous pour parler de la souveraineté et la provision de Dieu. The sovereignty and the provision of the Lord. So what I'm going to do first, we're going to talk about the word sovereignty. A lot of people, when you think of the word sovereignty, they think, oh, souveraineté, I don't know what that means. But sovereignty simply means to have complete domination, to be in charge. Example, for sovereignty, c'est là où il maman, papa, il y a un petit, maman, papa, il y a un seul même qui est en charge, ou bien un roi qui est en charge. Il y a même, il n'y a pas de rien, il n'y a pas de question. Ça, il dit, c'est ça le doit fait. That's what sovereignty means. So complete domination is the definition of sovereignty, but the best way, puis mieux, ouais, Jean pour qu'à pour qu'à expliquer souveraineté, is God being on top of the universe, God in charge of the whole universe. That means there's nothing limited to God. God is in charge. Whatever He says goes. Whatever He says will happen. Jodi, I'm going to talk about two prophets. I'm going to talk about two prophets. The first one I'm going to explain about is going to talk about the sovereignty of the Lord and the second one is going to talk about the provision of the Lord, how he takes care of us and how he will always provide for us even if even if things are going south in our lives. So the first one I want to talk about is Jonah. Jonas. So Jonah, they are prophet and God told Jonah to go ahead and preach to the Ninevites. I'll preach to the Ninevites. Give them the judgment that, they, that I'm going to give them. And pretty much Jonah did not like it. Jonah did not like Nineveh at all. So he said, so what he did, he tried to, if we read verse 3, it says, but Jonah got up and went to the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. So, pour nous comprendre l'histoire, ça bien. Okay. So, I Israel, if I was to be like a map of Israel, Israel, when God told him to go this way, by foot, when he didn't know I don't want to do what God told me to do, so I'm going to go this way instead. And that caused a lot of problems. Even though Jonah didn't notice it immediately, it caused a lot of problems. And a lot of people might say, oh, Jonah is a prophet. Oh, Jonah is a prophet. How come he's acting like this? What is he doing so incorrect? Why is he acting like this so, so disobedient to the Lord? But the thing is, you got to reflect and ask yourself, can you call yourself Jonah too? Est-ce que tu es Jonas? Gain fois bon Dieu dou pou faire en route ou pa vle faire route non ou faire en l'autre route plutôt. Gain fois bon Dieu dit oui ou dit non. Gain fois bon Dieu dit faire à gauche ou faire à droite. There's times you say okay, God says okay, I want you to do this for me. But then you say okay, you know what? I'm going to do that instead. I want to choose to do this and I want to choose to do something else instead. And pretty much this is not a good way to live for God. The thing is the, the good news is that God's will will always happen. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11 says that uh, his word always produces fruit. And it also says that whenever he, sends it, whenever he sends it out, it accomplishes what he wants it to do. That's Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So pretty much, even if you try, especially when God wants you to be the one to do it, especially when you want to do it, 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 you want to He's going to find a way to make sure that it's you that does it. He wanted Jonah. He could have asked any of the other prophets at that time, but he asked Jonah. He told Jonah to go ahead and do it. And pretty much Jonah tried to, tried to run away, but God is still on his throne. God's not going to be like, oh, no, Jonah ran away. I don't know what to do now. No, God is still on his throne. So what does he do? We read verse 4. The Lord hurled a powerful wind on the sea. And it caused a violent storm, threatening to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their own gods for help and threw cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep in the hold. If you ever do a sin, if you 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 do a
Mais si on l'autre bagage l'eau à l'église ou comprendre Jonas c'est un prophète lui était. So he knew better. Il connaît il pas doit faire, il pas doit faire en l'autre volonté que volonté de bon Dieu, but he still try to go another way. And then he thought he was perfectly fine. What la nous lire Bible là, il says that he was sleeping. Il a dormi en bas. But this whole time pour job moun marin yo, yo te ça yo de faire, yo obligé de faire sacrifice. That means when you, whenever you sin, even if it's not you that's feeling the pain, somebody's going to feel the pain. A beautiful example is how we're sinners, but Jesus had to die on the cross for us. Malgré ce pas Jésus qui fait rien, Jésus obligé de venir mourir sur la croix pour nous qu'à sauver. Parce que c'est nous-mêmes qui cause, c'est nous-mêmes qui gagne bagarre là. When we need somebody to fix it, we need somebody to pay for it, and none of us could pay for it on our own. So what we see now is the is the sailors, marin yo, they obligé voyer cargo yo. Their cargo all over the water. They wanted to send it. They don't know anything about Jonah. They don't know anything about Jonah running away from God. They don't know anything about that. They just said, okay, Jonah, you want to come with us? Go ahead. But now because of Jonah, parce que Jonah, si obligé voye tout bagay, yo ta voye notashish, yo voye notlo. Now, si son nou sacrifice, yo passe, mise, yo passe, parce que yon moun pa vle fe volonté bon Dieu. That's imp- so that's why it's important to always serve God. Because even if you don't feel it, somebody else is going to feel it. And if it's not somebody else, then obviously it's going to be you. So, I want to talk to you guys about. So, uh, what happens eventually is that Jonah ends up explaining to them that it was because of him this whole thing is going on. And if they simply throw Jonah in the water, Jonah is going to be, the, the whole storm is going to stop. And the, the sailors, they, they didn't want to at first. So, they ended up throwing Jonah in the water. And as soon as he got in the water, everything got calm. Tout ba est campé et bim nan kite nou konnè malgré marin yo te kwè nan zye pa yo yo komanse servi bon Dieu yo komanse louer bon Dieu yo konnè se li menm ki vre Dieu. So what happened next was a big fish came and swallowed Jonah and for three days and three nights the fish just went around the water. I mean, yeah, poisson li li vale Jonas li li tok ou fè ou pale avec Jonas tout côté jusqu'à les trois jours passés pour river devant so he could get on the ground again. And now, finally, Jonah's outside of the fish, and he's back on land. And now here's Jonah in Israel again. And God is saying, go ahead and head to Nineveh, where I've sent my, and give them my judgment. Jonah obviously chose to, chose to listen, and when we read ahead, we see that uh, the Ninevites, they chose to repent. But there is something that I just wanted to talk about. So now we know the whole story about it, but I want to talk about Another thing that happened because of Jonah's disobedience. On look back, he fed back to Jonah. Jonah's part not it. Le bonje mane nou pou fè an bagay. La toujou prepare an wood pou nou. It's not gonna be like fun fair wood pa nou fun fair bagay kon sa. Jonah se se fè wood pa bagay yo pa pa se bien pou li. It didn't go out well for him when he tried to go his own way. But when God gives us a path, when God when God asks us to do something, He already has the path set up for us. Li kiton gen provision pou nou. Il a préparé tout le bagage pour nous. Bon, on l'autre bagage encore. Si Jonas, le bim n'a dit Jonas, tu dois payer un ticket pour le camion de la bateau. The thing that God asked Jonas to do, il n'a pas demandé pour payer, dépenser en rien. Seulement, il marche dans mon pays, il n'a pas besoin de monter dans le bateau. Il n'a pas besoin de monter dans le bateau. Il n'a pas besoin de parler avec lui, il n'a pas besoin de parler avec lui. Mais non, parce que Jonas ne voulait pas écouter, il a essayé de faire une provision de tête pâle pour le camion de la bateau. Mais il a essayé de faire une provision de tête pâle, il a toujours. It's always bad. It's not, it's not going to be that good when you try to take care of yourself to disobey the Lord. It's not going to work. So the next prophet that I'm going to talk to you guys about, this prophet I like a lot. His name is Elijah, Eli. So, pour expliquer comment comment Eli t'aie or how to this what I'm about to tell you about Eli and uh, Elijah is that is we're going to have to start in verse uh, chapter 17 of 1 Kings. So Elijah came to King Ahab. Ahab Wakab, it was a very wicked king. For, you, for those of you who don't know, he was a very bad king. He didn't really trust in God. He didn't really follow God. But what made matters even worse, he married a woman named Jezebel. And Jezebel was even, it was like bad. It was really, really bad. The Bible even let us know that, yes, King Ahab was in charge of Israel. Wakab était en charge d'Israël, mais c'était Jezebel qui était en charge de Wakab. It was Jezebel that was in charge of King Ahab. So it was really, really bad. So, uh, oh, Queen Jezebel, she believed in a bunch of different gods, didn't believe about God. She cursed God's name before, and pretty much she only served Baal, her own god, her own main god. So now, 
Here's Elijah in chapter 17 of 1 Kings, and he goes to King Ahab. Living devant Wakab, he dit, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or no rain during the next few years until I give word. So pretty much, Elijah comes with the Spirit of the Lord. And this is a tough thing because the Bible lets us know whenever you get a king very upset, this is not good news for a king. So when you get a king very upset, it's like you're almost you're asking for death. That's what the book of Proverbs says. When you, when you upset the king, it's like you're asking for death. It's a wise thing to keep the king happy. That's what they say in the book of Proverbs. But here's Elijah telling them there's going to be a great famine because I'm not going to let any rain come for the next few years until I say so. So now, God told Elijah to go run, to, uh, to go east and head to the Kareth Brook. And pretty much, God said he was going to send food by ravens to get and give the food. And the ravens would give food to Elijah. And Elijah would be able to drink from the river. The brook was a river. So he was able to drink and he was able to eat. But he saw Eli in the ravine of Kerit. Eli said, Eli, you have to put it in the water. And you have to put it in the water. 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 So Elijah was pretty much set after this. Mais après un petit temps, the, after a while, the, the Bible lets us know, because of what Elijah said, parce que peut-être uh, peut ça, il, il était dit, pas de la pluie, la ville a commencé à sécher. It, it started start to dry up. There's no more water in that, in that brook anymore. And the rest of chapter 17, it kind of talks about how Elijah went to another place, but we're going to skip that part. And I'm going to go straight to the, to the hot, juicy part. And I say hot because this story is going to include fire. No pun intended. But... Um, Elijah finally chooses to come back to King Ahab. And pretty much, And Elijah said, no, it's not me, it's you that problem. He's saying, it's you that caused all this problem, all these problems in the land of Israel. So now, he told King Ahab, listen, you and your prophets of Baal, tell them to come to Mount Carmel. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to meet you there too. I'm going to meet you there as well. And also, don't forget to bring the land of Israel. Bring all the people of Israel. We're going to, we're going to find a solution to figure out who is the real God here. Who is the real God of Israel? Okay, Prophète Baal, 400 prophètes Baal, et puis tout le peuple d'Israël, nous mettons des mots de camel, nous pouvons trouver qui est ce vrai Dieu. So now they go up to Mount Carmel, and then Elijah comes, and everybody's around, tout le peuple d'Israël est là. Elijah comes, he says, Messali, he said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Eli said, "Ah, mbaka, mbaka no bai agosh adwat bai shrasi 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 yun. Si leten an se bonzier an sevil. Si se si se bal ki vredzier an sevil. Me pep yo te yo te pe yo yo pa pe yo te pe. And they were like quiet. They were saying, okay, um, okay. Make put yo pa dien. Eli continue. Eli explique comment concours sa pralie, comment compétition sa pralie. So he said, there's gonna be we're gonna set up two altars." Baal, you, I mean, uh, Ahab, you can set up your altars for Baal, and I'm going to set up my altar for the Lord. And then pretty much you can set up however you want to do it, make it look nice or whatever. We're going to get your, we're going to get, you, you can get one of the two bulls that we have. You put your bull on the altar, and I'm going to put my bull on the altar. But the thing is, it's going to have to be God, the real God, that's going to have to drop the fire. So he said, whoever, and then Elijah concluded saying, whoever is God, who's God? Whoever the God is that drops the fire or that starts the fire is the real God. So the Dieu qui fait qui la redifie c'est lui-même qui veut dire. Quand les peuples peuples Israël attendent ça, ils bien ils disent avec bon force. Mais et puis les peuples Israël attendent, peuples Israël leur dit okay that's a sound sound bon idée, sound bon idée because you know if he's God he's gonna be able to drop fire, he's gonna be able to put fire. So uh, the people of pro the prophets, the four hundred prophets, you come and see you. Eli qui dit au commencement. 
Bon, tellement elle est fille qu'elle connaît, uh, it's gonna be him that's his God that's gonna win, the real God that's gonna win. Dit que t'as choisi qui une des deux au livre, il veut choisir. So now you come, you come to you, you prepare your hotel la, you feel very well, bien vous connaissez Wally, c'est un walk up, c'est un Wally. So il gagne un peu l'argent, il a fait very well, il a fait un peu le monde venir, by comme ça. So they made it very pretty. And you come and say dance, 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 dance. By ça, quand vous êtes commencé le matin. You did pass it. You dance, dance, dance. Never pass it. You dance, dance, dance. So on um, this pass it. Oh, ball, come on, come on, come on, ball, come on. Ten o'clock comes. Eleven o'clock comes. All this time, the whole morning, they've been trying to pray to Bell, to tell Bell to get fired, to go ahead and burn it on the on the sacrifice that they had. The whole time, nothing happened, and it was finally noon. Me derive and nothing happened. Now all the people of Israel, they're like, oh. If if he was a real God, something would have happened by now. Si Baal était un bon Dieu, était un vrai Dieu. On va être fait depuis, on va être fait qu'on y a. Depuis matin, nous t'allons appuyer. Depuis matin, nous l'allons appuyer. N'abloué Baal, on est arrivé. So now, Eli, ouais, j'ai eu senti. Eli commence à jouer Baal. Il dit, hey, quand nous parlons, nous parlons de Baal fort assez. Vous connaissez un Dieu lié, fort et le plus fort. Ou bien la parler en moun. Or maybe he's just sleeping. Or maybe you gotta just wake him up. Or maybe some version says he's using the restroom like he's relieving himself. And pretty much uh, Elijah's just making fun of them. And he made the prophets, it's a prophet, the pif ache, you come and say, coupe kor, you buy some, buy it, you go. You have a pil, vie bagay. Men an yen rive, you pat juen an ken wizout. Koule prophet, you fatigue. When the prophets were finally tired, Elijah was like, okay, coupe am. Lap gade, yo, lap gade, lap gade. And now, This is where I, I said all of this so we could talk about the provision. Don't forget, I'm talking about the provision of the Lord, how God will provide. So now, done this. Elijah called all the people. He called all the people. He the And then he commenced to arrange the hotel. The Bible says he took 12 wash for each tribe of Israel. When he was salvé, he took a water, he put it in the hotel. He was in the hotel, he put it in the hotel. After that, he took a water, he cut it in pieces. He cut it in So he's making his altar and he puts the, the bowl uh, on top of the altar. And finally, the last thing he did, which was very weird, He dug a trench. He dug a trench. He dug a trench around the whole altar. And when he was done, he called, he had servants. He had servants. And he told the servants, this is what he said right here. He said, he said, fill four large jars of, with water and pour the water over the offering with the wood. So he dit, point quatre gros, quatre gris gallons de l'eau, voyez le nom sur l'hôtel, voyez le sur un hôtel là. And then after they did this, he said, do the same thing again. He said, okay, the servants were done again, they said, do the same thing again. And then when they were done again, they said, do the same thing again. Do it a third time. But what happened? They were done long, they were done long, they were done long, they were done long, okay, c'est pas lui même qui pourra faire dire ça c'est pas un c'est pas un monde qui pourra faire dire ça si tu fais ta laguer sur ça nous ta doit connaître on dit lui it took away all the questions of maybe Elijah is going to try to cheat and drop a fire or something no it took all of those questions away but it brought up one question il effacer toute question yo depuis il était qu'à faire un petit coquin mais il a une seule question devant peuple israël côté Élie joint de l'eau ça lui OK c'est quatre gris gallons de l'eau quatre gallons de l'eau four gallons of water jars of water et il dit pour faire trois fois. Four times three is twelve. Ça fait douze cris gallons de l'eau. Payant pas de jambe pour trois années. Y'a pas de rosé de pour trois années. Y'a pas de jambe café en yon avec de l'eau pour trois années. Y'a oublié comment l'eau paraît. Côté il y a eu tout de l'eau ça. That's the, that's the provision of the Lord. That's right there's the provision. Can you just imagine? Like for three years, I could see him like talking to his servant and saying, hey, you remember when I told King Ahab that he wasn't going to find any rain for like three years or something, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, get the 12 gallons of water and start pouring it on the altar real quick for me, please. He's like, that's, that's, that's intense. That shows that Elijah has provision from the Lord since he stayed with God, since he followed God, even though times were tough, even though there was nothing in the land. Même Jean, pour nous même tout, nous, dans le moment ça, nous, là, le wal no market, pour est-ce pas gagné? Mais si vous continuez à marcher avec Jésus, continuez 
um, continue walking with Jesus, continue moving with the Lord, you will see bonjour pour toujours gain provision pour ou pas ou pas non problème par contre ou pas contre de ou joindre ça, contre de ou chercher ça, ou toujours joindre. You're going to always have enough for yourself and for your family because you follow the Lord. So now when we continue, of course, the part that everybody knows, God Elijah finally prayed to the Lord and he told God to to do what he uh, uh, to bring down the fire, not so that he could be cool or whatever, but so that the whole people of Israel could know that there's only one God, and His name is and He's the Lord, and He's the one Lord. I mean, so now the fire comes. Everybody's celebrating. Like, wow! It's it's God. God is the real God. The Lord is the real God. It's the Lord who is God. And now everybody's celebrating. But Elijah did something very, very strange. He went to go. He went by himself ahead, like away from the people. And he brought one of his servants with him. And then he went to go pray. So it's been set. He did it over and over and over. And he did it about seven times. And on the seventh time, when he told him to go back to go look to see if any rain was coming, he said, the little boy said, I see a, I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. So now Elijah Think about it. He told King he said he told the servant to go tell King Ahab. Go tell King Ahab he better go home now before the rain stops him. Think about it. It's been three years, there's no rain. And this rain is gonna so that means this rain is gonna be a very crazy big rain. Not some kind of little it's going to be a big rain on on la so now he's telling king ahab you better go you better go home he's telling the servant to go tell king ahab you better go home before the rain stops you when now walk up we get on west ciel la comme c'est fait noir li wè on pile noir ji wè comme c'est fait apli li tande de bruit la pli Probably it's on why he's a king. King Ahab is a, I mean, yeah, he's a king. So he has chariots and horses. So now Elijah King Ahab with his horses and chariots. What about Elijah, who doesn't have a single thing? If he's gonna go home, it's gonna be it's gonna be on foot. The rain's gonna stop him even worse than it could have stopped Eli uh, King Ahab because he has no feet. I mean, he has no horses. But now we see here in the very last verse of the of the chapter of First uh, Kings chapter eighteen, the very last verse, it says, "Then the Lord gave Elijah special strength." He took Elijah tucked in his cloak and says, so li mare rad li mba kon mkon wè an lan tan lèm te ti moun mkon wè lè tok ou ayisyen lè ou fache ou pa le batay yo mare rad yo kon sa yo di an batay an ale kon sa tok yo pa rekò yo pou 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 met gason sou yo kounya el mè li li fè menm bagay la li mare rad li li konnen la pli pou al vini li mare rad li bon je di an bib nan di bon je pa lan gwo pouvwa an special an pouvwa an pouvwa special uh it's not natural it's very very like it's holy a holy strength and he took this cloak and he ran all the way ahead of king ahab to jezreel wakab let the well la plan li te di okay mpou nou pa jezreel et puis il eli eli pa la le wakab te ale wakab te gita ale eli te li well la plan vini et puis uh what he's trying to do now eli di okay mou fòm ale tou mli al li al menm an vil nan jezreel and what's going on he runs. He's running. Walk up na chevali. Ni na Charlie la mute cheval kon sa. Eli la kouri. Walk up a mute cheval. Eli a mute descent de grand sandalio. Sa rive, sa rive li kouri, 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 kouri. E se bim nan. Pa mwen, se bim nan ki di. Eli rive nan nan vil nan avant walk up. Sa rive provision de Dieu. Provision la provision de Dieu. That shows the provision of the Lord. Even though even though King Ahab had his horses. And he could have been straight if he left on if he left with his horses. King, I mean Elijah, he had no kind of he didn't have his own kind of strength, and he didn't have any horses. He didn't have any cars. All he had was his two feet and his sandals. So and God and God gave Elijah the wisdom to know that the rain could stop King Ahab. So if it could stop King Ahab with his horses, what about him and his feet? 
So God gave him the strength. The Bible says it gives him special strength. So and he, and he took he tucked in his clothes and he ran and he beat. He beat King Ahab to the city of Jezreel. King Ahab was riding his horses and, and Elijah was on foot. That shows the provision of the Lord. That shows that whenever you need things, God will give it to you. Sometimes you might want something, but God doesn't give it to you. But at the very time when you need certain things, God will give it to you. You don't have to worry about, oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suffer. Oh, my goodness, there's nothing. Oh, my goodness. Pabli, tu as une grosse sécheresse dans le pays, mais pas tu as sécheresse even though there was a big famine on the, in the land of Israel Elijah was still being fed by God with, through the birds and through the brook that shows that when you trust in the Lord when you follow the Lord provision is not something you got to worry about you're going to have all of that God's going to take care of you he's going to be with you earlier I gave you a verse on Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 I'm going to give you one more verse for provision here it's Psalms chapter 46 verse 1 it says, the Lord is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. That shows that God is always ready to be with us anytime we're in trouble. But you got to trust in him. And he has to be your refuge and strength. Money cannot be your refuge and strength. Uh, wealth cannot be your refuge and strength. They can help you to, to do things for the Lord. Maybe they can help you to do whatever you need to do for God. But you can't trust in it and make it your refuge and strength. The only thing that should be your refuge and strength if you want to continue having provision is the Lord. Because everything comes from him. And don't forget how we mentioned earlier, he's the one that's sovereign. He's the one that's in charge. Whatever happens, as he's either put his signature on it or he did it himself. Whatever happens, it's, he, he already saw what happened. He already saw everything that goes on. He knows what's going on. If we're surprised about it today, he already knew about it like probably 50 years ago. Everything that's going on on the earth, God already knows it. God already, he already knew our reactions to it. He already knew all the things that would happen that would cause the, whatever situation that we're in. So we got to remember to trust in God because wherever we are right now, God already had that going on. He already was working on it. All right. There's going to probably be more future things going on in our lives. God already knows about it today that we don't know. That's why we have to trust in God. And that's all I have for you guys today. So don't forget to remember that God is the sovereign Lord and he'll always provide if you trust in him. Amen.